The National Grid by kscience.com Here I'm drawing a map of the United Kingdom and Ireland. Across the UK are many cities and other urban settlements consisting of schools, buildings, homes, offices, factories and so on. Now all of the cities, towns and villages across the UK will need electricity. Now the question is, how do they get their electricity? Well, the answer is, spread around the country are many power stations close to cities, towns and villages. These power stations generate large amounts of electricity, which they transfer from the power stations to the different settlements. These power stations generate electricity, which have an alternating potential difference of 25,000 volts. What connects the power stations to the homes, offices, schools and factories are a network of transformers, pylons and transmission cables spread right across the United Kingdom. Schools and buildings receive a potential difference of 230 volts, whereas factories receive a potential difference of either 100,000 volts or 33,000 volts. What you've just learnt about is called the National Grid. The National Grid is a network of transformers, pylons and transmission cables which are sent to homes, schools, offices and factories all around the country. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. We're now going to look in detail at how the national grid works, and it starts with the power station. A typical power station generates electricity at an alternating potential difference of 25,000 volts. This potential difference is then sent to a step-up transformer, which increases the alternating potential difference from 25,000 volts to 400,000 volts. This is the job of a step-up transformer. The step-up transformer increases the potential difference. Pylons and transmission cables then transfer their electricity over long distances. And before the electricity reaches cities, towns and villages, the electricity flows through a step-down transformer. A step-down transformer decreases the alternating potential difference from 400,000 volts to 230 volts if it is to flow into homes and schools. So we already know, power stations generates an alternating potential difference of 25,000 volts. The next stage of the national grid is the step-up transformer, and we know the step-up transformer increases the alternating potential difference to 400,000 volts. Not only is the potential difference increased, but the current also decreases. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Moving on to the next stage. These are the transmission cables and these are the pylons. They're responsible for transferring the electricity from the step-up transformers to the step-down transformers. Now what's really important to understand, when the electricity flows through the transmission cables, resistance heats up the wires. The electrical energy is transferred into thermal energy and this thermal energy dissipates into the surroundings, represented by the red arrows. This thermal energy increases the surrounding temperature of the air. So as the thermal energy dissipates into the surroundings, the temperature of the air increases. But thankfully, the cables are cooled by the air. Now, the more thermal energy wasted into the surroundings means the less electricity the homes, schools and offices and factories receive. So to reduce the power wasted, we use a higher alternating potential difference of 400,000 volts. As a higher potential difference is more efficient compared to a lower potential difference. 
This is because there is less current needed to transfer the same power, so there is less energy wasted by heating. The next stage is the step down transformer. This decreases the size of the potential difference. This is really important because a potential difference of 400,000 volts reaching homes, schools, offices and factories is very, very dangerous. Therefore, a step-down transformer allows the potential difference to be much safer. Homes, schools and businesses receive a potential difference of 230 volts, whereas factories receive a potential difference of 33,000 volts or 100,000 volts. Pause the video here to practice the keywords. The answers will follow. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com for more videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.